Well, one of the conversations that I have had several times as we have moved through this pandemic has been about the difficulties it has brought to the lives of our elderly, those who reside in long-term care facilities. At the beginning of the pandemic, as a vulnerable population, poorly protected, many died. But even as the medical situation stabilized, for their own protection, we isolated them. We separated them from any physical connection with their family, their children and grandchildren, for months at a time. In many conversations with families preparing for funerals, I heard that their parents and grandparents suffered because of this. During that isolation, many declined significantly and some died before their time. This is a sad story. It moves us because it is near to us. Many, if not most of us, know someone, a person, a family in that situation. Perhaps thinking about that story, a story that is close to us, can help in some small way for us to begin to appreciate and even to enter into an experience that none of us have ever shared. And that is the experience of the thousands upon thousands of children from First Nations and their families, the experience of families torn apart and in some cases destroyed by Canada's residential school system in which our Catholic Church and many of her ministers, we ourselves actively participated. Those young children were taken from their homes, their families, their community, their culture and language, and effectively isolated from them for years. All those children and their families suffered. Many were abused. Many also died. And even the survivors could never get back what they had lost. Now, speaking more directly to the discovery at Kamloops, it turns out that the example that I used is even further away from that experience of our First Nations people than I originally suggested. It's different in many ways. First, because these children for whom we pray tonight were taken and died at the very beginning of their lives, not the end. And also because the stories that I shared with you that I heard were stories that I heard as I met with families to arrange funeral masses, prayers, and burials for their loved ones. In horrifying contrast, we know that these children and their families did not receive even that small comfort in the midst of an impossible situation. Many never knew what happened to their children. Many still don't know. And so they were also denied not only their children, but even the opportunity to properly mourn for them. We know from our own experience how important that is. As a society and as a church, we will never be able to give back what we have taken from those children, their families, and Canada's First Nations. We can only do what we can. And for today, not for all time, but for today, for us here at St. Pius, that means we can ask for forgiveness, express our sorrow, and finally, as we Catholic Christians do, turn to our God on behalf of those we have injured. As we heard in our first reading from the book of Lamentations from the Old Testament, a book that was written at a time of national despair and loss for Israel, we do believe, along with the writer of that book, that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great, O oh God, is your faithfulness. As we wait quietly here this evening for the Lord, as we wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to pour out his love into our world through this sacrament that we are about to celebrate, because that is his promise, as we wait for that, we do what we can. We ask for forgiveness from those we have wronged, and we trust in God's faithfulness and mercy.
for us and for all in need.